So, um, over the last several weeks, I have been making some sermon review videos. Uh, not just the couple that I did of some examples of bad street preaching or how not to interact with law enforcement. But um, I've actually been making videos of reviews of sermons from churches here in my region, in my area. One of the reasons that I'm doing that is because I'm finding that outside of one, maybe two churches in the Rochester, Minnesota area, there is a really, really bad uh, trend. Either everything is legalistic, uh, hardcore, free will fundamentalism, or very much the self-help evangelicalism that is just exploding all over the United States and has been really since Willow Creek uh, came on the scene well over 20 years ago. Um, as a person who does a lot of gospel advancement into the region around uh, southeast Minnesota, into Wisconsin, and down into northeast Iowa, it is painfully obvious that many people are indoctrinated into Christianity in the sense that they think that because they've done a bunch of the right stuff they're Christian and the church that they go to is the only true church well you know what scratch that it's not the only true church it's just the church that's right for them at this particular point in their life and there's not anything necessarily wrong with that because sometimes God does lead us to different bodies at different times for different purposes. I think it's way too easy to leave churches today. Uh, and I say that as a person who's had a hard time finding a church where doctrine is taught and applied and brought to bear on the life of the body. You know, I've been to churches that teach sound doctrine, but there's little to no application of that doctrine. I've also been to churches that adamantly oppose the teaching of doctrine because they think that it drives people away. And what you see in both of those cases, in the, in the first case of the churches that adhere to sound doctrine but don't apply it, you see people who think that because the church adheres to sound doctrine they're doing well, but the people have no grasp, no depth. And in the case of the churches that refuse to instruct in doctrine, instruct in, in what the Bible teaches, Making it a requirement, if you're going to be part of that body, uh, to not only be able to say you hold to these things, but to understand and, and apply it to your life, you, you see a, a vapidness. And therefore, anybody is right. It doesn't matter what their spirituality is. If they claim to be Christian, they must be right. And so when I preach the gospel to a lost soul, my desire, my goal is for that person to repent, believe the gospel, come to genuine saving faith in Christ and his finished work, and then find a place where they can go and be fed and discipled. Now, I, I'm not opposed to discipling a person, but... I want to be able to plug a person in and and I understand that not everybody's going to be comfortable in a church that happens to be Baptist and Calvinistic um, not everybody's going to be comfortable in a conservative Orthodox Presbyterian 
church. And by orthodox, I don't mean the denomination. I mean, you know, it adheres to the things that rose up out of the Reformation. Not everybody is regulative principle in their worship, and not everybody is normative in, in their principles of worship. And I think there's room for disagreement on, on some of that. Um, it's adiaphora. But that doesn't mean that everybody needs to be in the exact same place. Now, that being said, we shouldn't be church shopping to find a person who's only going to tell us what we want to hear. And so what I've discovered over the last few weeks is that it's bad in this region. It's very bad. I don't have an issue with the fundamentals of the faith. What I do have an issue with is fundamentalism. I don't have an issue with churches that are centered around proclaiming the gospel to the lost. What I do have an issue with are churches that, quite frankly, say they're preaching the gospel, but they don't even preach the gospel in their own sermons. How am I supposed to believe that their people are preaching the gospel to their neighbors and to their co-workers and to strangers on the street? I don't have a problem with churches that don't have an active body of men who are out preaching the gospel in the open air. What I have a problem with are churches that think that outreach, offering car washes and babysitting and free food and soup kitchens is what it means to be preaching the gospel. Can you do those things? Absolutely, you can. But it should be to preach the gospel, not to lo just love your neighbor. True love for neighbor compels us to preach the gospel to them. What does Jesus tell us? He tells us, love your neighbor as yourself. And the greatest love that we can have for the, our neighbor is the great love that has been shed on us, which is to proclaim the gospel to them doesn't mean I don't meet them where they are. It doesn't mean that I don't reach out to them in their times of need, in times of mourning, in times of great distress. But I bring the gospel to bear on that relationship. Churches aren't doing that in this area. They're just not. Even sound churches appear to be more interested in meeting the felt needs. And that's not all of them. But I'm telling you, I am virtually alone in southeast Minnesota when it comes to taking the gospel out into the public. And the reason that I say that is because I'm alone. And there are people that are further north uh, of me that do it. And there, there's a, a dear brother over in La Crosse. Uh, I've never had the, the ministry the blessing to minister with him on the streets but I know that he is faithful to proclaim the gospel to strangers and to neighbor and to co-worker and he has picked a career that's all about serving his neighbor but what I'm going to tell you is, is there's just not a lot of gospel focused gospel advancing Christians in this region period no they claim they are but they're not and so I'm going to continue to do these sermon reviews in this area for no other reason than because I want people to, even if it's one person, like the, the, the name of the ministry, if only even one, even if one person is able to sit down after they see even a clip of one of these sermon reviews and say, whoa, wait a minute, Pastor so-and-so is not, there's something missing here, he's not hitting it, and I, and I want to bring a couple of scriptures to bear here real quick before I end this video. I want to bring what Paul says to, t to Titus in his epistle to Titus. Um, in Titus chapter 1, Paul says, For this reason I left you in Crete, that you would set in order what remains, and appoint elders in every city as I directed you. Namely, if any man is above reproach, the husband of one wife, having children who believe, not accused of dis 
dissipation, or rebellion. For the overseer must be above reproach as God's steward, not self-willed, not quick-tempered, not addicted to wine, not pugnacious, not fond of sordid gain, but hospitable, loving what is good, sensible, just, devout, self-controlled, holding fast the faithful word which is in accordance with the teaching, so that he will be able to exhort in sound doctrine and refute those who contradict. And that's, that's from chapter 1. And then he says this in chapter 2 at the beginning. But, as for you, speak the things which are fitting for sound doctrine. Older men are to be temperate, dignified, sensible, sound in faith, in love, in perseverance. Older women likewise are to be reverent in their behavior, not malicious gossips, not enslaved to much wine, teaching what is good, so that they may encourage the young women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be sensible, pure, workers at home, kind, being subject to their own husbands, so that the word of God will not be dishonored. See, this emphasis is teach sound doctrine, appoint elders, and then they're going to teach these things to the people in the congregation, and so that they're like what I just read. No gossiping, standing firm in the faith, honoring God, being respectful to one another, being respectful to their neighbors. And, and that's what an elder, a pastor, is supposed to do. There are so many pastors that are not doing that today. And, and then this from Jude. Um, here's Jude writing to combat early Gnosticism. And he's writing his epistle. And he opens with this in verse 3. He says, Beloved, while I was making every effort to write to you about our common salvation, I felt the necessity to write to you appealing that you contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all handed down to the saints. For certain persons have crept in unnoticed, those who were long beforehand marked out for condemnation, ungodly persons who turn the grace of our God into licentiousness and deny our only Master and Lord, Jesus Christ. Here's Jude saying, I wanted to write to you about our common salvation, but you've allowed these people to come in, and they need to be reviewed. And they need to be booted out. And so my hope, my desire in all of this, I'm not, I'm not Paul, I'm not a prophet, I'm not an apostle. I'm just one man who has sins that burden him and weigh him down. Sins that, that aren't just flaws, they're not just brokenness. There's sins that cling to me. And I'm, I'm sickened by that. But nothing sickens me more than to see people who are supposed to be under shepherds of Christ not teaching their flocks sound doctrine but instead foisting on them self-help messages meant to make them feel good and tell them that they're perfect just the way they are well, that's not why Christ died that's not sound doctrine so I hope this helps you all understand why I do what I do. And, and I hope it helps you understand the importance of being Berean. We all need to be doing things like this. You may not need to make videos, but you should be reviewing your pastor's sermons. You should be taking notes. You should be listening. You should be paying attention. You should be calling him out when he's not teaching sound doctrine. You should be calling him out when he's not preaching the gospel. You should be calling him out when he's inserting meaning into a passage of scripture because he has an agenda. So that's my message. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing with these videos. I'm going to continue to preach the gospel on the streets. I'm going to continue to preach the gospel in the open air. I'm going to continue to preach the gospel to my neighbors and my co-workers and to people that I meet in every environment in one way, shape, or form. But I'm also going to continue to do this. The Reformation isn't my goal, but if that's what happens, I'm, I'm fine with that. There was a time where this country, or where this world needed a reformation years ago. And God lift, lifted up men to do that. And so if God sees fit to do that with the people that I know in my circle of friends, then I'm going to be fine with that too. And if that means that people don't like me and I lose all the subscribers, all 61 of you, on my YouTube channel. 
then I'd be okay with that too. But it's time for the church, the true people of God, to rise up and demand that they not be taught what appeals to their ears and to their deceitful hearts, but instead to be taught what is in, in accord with sound doctrine and that we reject false teachers. That's what we should be doing. So, if you have any questions, let me know. Silly Daniel.